Good morning, everyone. Let me know if you can see and hear me properly. I think everything's coming through loud and clear. Happy Sunday to my fellow Australians and happy Saturday night to my US subs. Interesting topic today in the stream, which garnered a lot of uh, really cool responses and really astute observations. The, the topic of, and I came across this, I've come across this kind of topic, not in these words, but similar, where you get slapped in the face by something your partner wants that blindsides you. Like everything's great and then they demand something or they seemingly blackmail you into something. They want something that you never expected. And I think everyone has the uh, the reaction of, well, didn't you know this before? Don't you talk? Um, let me first turn my phone on silent just so we're not bothered by anything. And the kind of comment... I get is something, the, the kind of comment I'm, I'm talking about is something akin to this, where I've been with my woman for a while now, and she just dropped a bombshell on me that she wants kids. What do I do? Now, I would say, do you talk? W was this a total surprise? Because if it's a real deal breaker for you, if it's something that is a no-go for you, the, the important foundation parts of your life should be discussed um, like happily and you want to get to them. When you uncover them and the other person is on the same page of wanting the same things out of life, that's when you really know that you're compatible. This isn't just a pretty face. This is a pretty face I can talk to. This is a pretty face that likes what I like. This is a pretty face that I say a sentence and their sentence follows on from my sentence in the same way. And if that's not some sort of fo a form of compatibility, I don't know what is, but I don't know if it's some people they get used to just vibing together as, as the young kids say and not talking about anything serious and they just get used to it. And But then again, it's your own fault by being surprised by really important incompatibilities later. I would think that you would get the incompatibilities, if there are any, rip those band-aids off on the first date. Keep it fun, but talk about the really important stuff that would uh, make you not want to be with anybody. Say you're an atheist and they're highly religious. They want kids, you don't. They just love a go, go, go lifestyle and they're materialistic and they want to build some sort of empire and they want a mansion and that they will sacrifice anything and everything for that goal. And uh, you have to be that business oriented person. And for some people, that's their match. So a lot of these real essential pillars that you are, and then you would that's the kind of compatibility that you need in another person. You'd hope that you'd find that out through conversation. And whenever I hear these blindsiding comments, I'm thinking, didn't you ever talk about this? Or th they get married and all of a sudden she blew up and I never saw her temper ever. Did you never have conversations where do you just agree with everything exactly the same? Are you mirrors of each other? Even differences of opinions, you would have seen some of that temper come out. So uh, and the actual, I mean, we, we have the, we have the cliche of the woman that gets pregnant and then she wants the kid despite what the man wants. There's that. And that's not necessarily what I'm talking about here, but you should really vet that person. You don't want to go anywhere near them or, or go to bed with a person that dangerous where you don't, you're not sure on her stance with kids. If you're both open, that's different. But if you're a complete no, like I've always been, then a woman that's kind of like, yeah, whatever. Okay, you don't want kids human, so 
I guess it's fine. No, that's she would be happy if she had kids. But I'm just kind of she's happy going along along for this ride of meeting a new guy. She's happy with me. But once we settle into normalcy in a relationship, like everyday life, then she will see what's missing. And for a person like that that wants kids, they will see that a kid is missing from their lives. Whereas with me, a kid has never been missing from my life. In fact, it's always seemed like an intrusion for me. And I know it's, I'm not saying anything about any of you that might think it's a gift and it's the reason for living. And if you don't have kids, there's no real point. I get it. But for me, I never had that. So I'm not disparaging anyone who wants kids and uh, family because it's quite normal and it's the reason why the human race is biologically here to reproduce. But I'm talking about being surprised that she wants kids and you don't. And it's a fundamental thing that will drive you apart. Let me pop out the chat just to... Just to see all your comments here. Okay. If you are here live, ladies and gentlemen, and you would like to... Um, leave a comment or ask a question about this topic during the stream. If you are here, add three yellow emojis like uh, this example here. This is just an example. Smiley faces, yellow smiley faces, yellow circles. Then I can actually see it against the black text of all of you people here. It stands out. Then I know you're wanting to ask a question or, or share something. Hopefully, that's not childish and um, related to this topic. An interesting comment from Ash that I want to relay here in the, in the chat. Let's see if I can get the chat up. Yep. Ash says, respectfully, if you're married, you owe her kids if she wants them. I don't agree. If I haven't talked about it, if I haven't agreed to anything, then I don't owe anyone anything. That's why I, I really push people to talk, to learn how to communicate and express themselves, to show through their words and actions, but especially through their words when you meet someone, because the person hasn't lo known you long enough to judge your actions. They can only first know you by the words that you speak and how clearly you can try and define who you are, right? To show them who you are. If I haven't agreed to it, I don't owe anyone anything, Ash. Uh, I don't know if you're a male or female, but I don't think you would uh, feel good about owing someone else something because they think, well, because we're together, I think you owe me this. And you have every right to say, well, you never talked about it with me. I never said yes. So what makes you think you can just demand this of me or take it? It's actually just taking it from somebody. What if my idea of commitment was, well, I can just take this and take that and do this and use you and manipulate you and take off and act any way I want, because that's my rule book that I haven't actually shown you and you haven't looked at it and signed on it and, and put a tick against it and said, yeah, that's fine with me. I think it's this assumption. It's a pretty big assumption that just because you care for someone, you love them, and you want to commit to them and get to know them, that you automatically owe them everything down the line that you would owe someone who was religious, married, uh, whatever it may be, without a conversation. It's fairly presumptuous to to just assume that, like, I, I, I'm just owed everything I think I'm owned, and I didn't, don't even have to ask them or get their agreement. If I can get... Like if I can get them to commit to me, locked in, I can do whatever I want according to the the assumed rules. It's, uh, yeah, rude, egotistical, and uh, you're using people. So this kind of comment to, to me um, where... Guys, but also girls, but I, I'm, I listen and I talk with guys most of the time about these topics. 
because women tend to be, uh, they have the law and society and everyone on their side that they can do everything they want. And also, if they get pregnant, they get the final say anyway. They can have a kid or not have a kid. Either option for them in society is fine. No one tells them what to do. But when a guy has to pay for it, be involved, and he has no say about whether or not he's a father. Imagine you had no say, no say at all, ladies, whether or not you were a mother. Uh, a guy could do what, whatever he wanted. As soon as you fell in love with him genuinely, then basically after that, he controlled whatever you did, didn't do, what you wanted. Like he didn't care what you wanted. It, ju it just needed to be his rules. And you were shamed into just following. No one cared that you were an individual with, you might have a say in something. They don't care if you agree or disagree. It's uh, it's pretty arrogant. Uh, and it's not a male, fe female thing to me. To me, it's just like the sign of complete arrogance and you should stay away from those people. Um, Adam Super C says, human beings are flawed at the best of times. Honesty up front would be nice. It's essential up front. I keep pushing you guys uh, because that's the only thing that started to make my life make sense. When I went on dates, when I was socializing, going through life honestly, not just me to the other person, but we, me with myself, you're just off the hook of any stress and fear. Like all of that fear, fear and walking on eggshells starts to uh, be behind you uh, the the more you're, you're honest. Honesty just uh, makes everything easier afterwards. Sometimes honesty doesn't feel nice, but straight afterwards, it's clear. Life's clear. You know which direction to go. The choices are, are much more clear. Rather than lying and then having a hundred other choices and then just multiplying the stress and having a thousand different directions, I would rather just be honest along the way and just have the the very few options laid in front of me by being honest. So Boffin says sound is good. That's good. All right. So there was a comment. Who left it? I think Quaz left this comment. Uh, comment yeah he said unilateralism never works this was a comment i think left in the um the community tab where i post updates and shout outs to streams coming up so feel free to go there and check my my youtube page and check for updates because sometimes youtube might not notify you quaz left a comment that said uh imagine if the husband just went out and bought a million dollar yacht that the wife didn't want and the law forced her to pay for half of it in spite of the fact that she never set a foot on board. Yeah. And uh, the girls might say it's a ridiculous comment, but it's uh, as ridiculous as what the law tells uh, a guy he has to do without his say, without his agreement. Like he'd, if she doesn't agree to a boat and he just does it while he's in a relationship with her, and what they'll say is, well, you slept with her, so it's kind of your responsibility. But if it happens and I can't address the problem, you know, if it's my responsibility, then I have some say. But you can't say it's my responsibility and I have absolutely no say. If the only responsibility I have, as a lot of the girl power chicks out there will say, well, is, well, don't sleep with women. So we don't sleep with any of you. We don't have a relation. And that's what a lot of guys are doing. They're avoiding you. Because if that's the answer, well, you shouldn't have slept with her. Okay. If that's the only reasonable thing that you will listen to, then we won't be with you anymore. We'll avoid you. You won't get dates. And all you have is hooking up with Chad on Tinder. Good luck. Have fun. Enjoy the therapy later. But you can't complain that guys don't trust you. Guys don't open up. Why won't he commit? It's because of all of, all of this. Because you're completely unfair. He has no say. Most women go into relationships in the West thinking that it's their relationship and why can't he just get on board with the program? Why can't he read these his lines in the script and just play his part as the lead character and I'm the other the female lead character? It's just very, very arrogant. And then they pretend to be the the innocent little girl saying Tihi. I'm just a girl. I just I'm just looking for love. Yeah, no, you're not. All right. Where were we? 
Let's get back to the stream. So let me know your thoughts in the in the comments because for me, I, I often wonder when, because I reflect on my past, the younger I was, the less I said, and it was pretty much my own fault because I didn't speak up, I didn't communicate. I was just a yes person to, to women, which is why I've... um. I've put this video, older video up for you to check out. I kept my mouth shut and hoped for the best. This is this was my tactic when I was in my 20s. Being a nice guy, just saying yes, dear, to a girl that I liked, and I just wanted it to stay frozen in the honeymoon period. The best way to do it is just to be agreeable, right? And unless my opinion was really at a 10, everything below a 10, I just said yes to whatever they wanted because it, unless it really, really was a 10, like I don't want kids, that was my 10. Everything else is like, oh, I can negotiate. Oh, she really wants this. Yeah, why not? I don't want the headaches. I don't want an argument. Just say yes. Just say yes. And it's no way to live. And your relationship doesn't last. If you're a self-respecting person that's tired of getting walked all over and you, you know what fair is and you're a thinker and you're interested in a philosoph philosophical way forward in life and fairness and things like that. Life needs to make sense to you. You don't like using people. Then it slowly becomes apparent that you're being used. If you're a nice person that doesn't like using people, I'll say it again, you very quickly, you start seeing the unfairness and why you f you're feeling bad and used and terrible about the person around the person that you're supposed to care about. You start to see that I'm not being treated fairly. The scales are, are unfairly weighted towards my partner and I get nothing. I can't even ask for anything. I'm shamed. I just have to keep saying yes. So learning to say no is a very, very huge. If there's one essential thing you can do is learn to say no to the things, not just that matter to you the most, but even intermediate things. You should have every right to just object and say, no, I don't know. I don't agree. I have a different point of view. And if someone gets annoyed at you, if Chicky Poo gets annoyed at you just having a different opinion to her, then I would really have a serious discussion and and find out why you can't have a different opinion, why everything has to be yes dear, otherwise she screws her face up like you just force fed her lemons. You can't stay in a place like that if you're a decent person that recognizes fairness and the difference between right and wrong and good and evil, evil and things like that. You, you can't. If that's the kind of person you are like me, I'm a, I've got a very strong barometer towards what's fair. Yeah, I can take some more of the load at certain times if I'm happy to do so, as long as I get something out of it and it's relatively fair. If I don't really care about the situation, I'm happy to give 100%, that's fine because I know I'll get something back later. But if you're just being used like a doormat all the time and you can't even get 5% of uh, yourself being heard or getting 5% of something in your life with a person or a job or there's nothing in it for you. Why are you there if it, if there's nothing in it for you? I don't see the point. Um, so again, if you would like to leave a comment during the stream, add three smiley faces or super chat me. Super chat below the stream if you're live and I'll definitely see it if you want me to read or see a comment. Ryan Dunn, he's got a comment here. Let's see what he says. He says, he says, I feel like if you tell a woman you don't want kids and she does, she will tell herself that you will change your, uh, I think that's mind eventually. Yes, unfortunately, there are a lot of selfish, stupid women out there like that. I had one ex particularly, two exes, but one in particular related to, to this topic where she was happy with me, she wanted children, and I kept reiterating at the start, look, if you really want kids, I'm not the guy for you. This is starting off well. This is, you know, I like where this is going. We're committed. And I just kept repeating at the start, I will keep asking you until I'm satisfied that you're okay with it. And eventually she didn't make an issue and I thought she was settled. And then all of a sudden, when it came to my brother's wedding and them wanting to have kids, she just blew up. This latent thing just came boiling up. This Leviathan just crashed into our relationship. And she was like, you know, I just saw them and I just realized how much I wanted kids and I want to have all this life and everything. And she just, I felt 
really bad for her because I thought she didn't want it that much. But again, all you can do is keep hammering the point home. And again, it's the person's responsibility to be honest. But what if they're lying? What if she was a terrible person and she just said what I wanted to hear, sp sperm jacked me, and then later on said, too bad, I'm having kids anyway. That was the fear I had with my previous ex. I, I'm bringing up these topics not to talk badly about my exes because most of my relationships, they were fine people. We just wanted different things and we, you know, we drifted apart at the end. But her particularly, I didn't trust her from the beginning in respect to kids, which is why I always played it safe in the bedroom. And you can use your imagination in a variety of ways. Because when I met her, we talked about, you know, kids and stuff. And I told her exactly that I didn't want any kids and I never wanted kids. And it's like a definite 100% no. And if she ever got pregnant and wanted to keep the kids, it would be over between the two of us. I, I made it very, very serious. Like, don't press that button. We'll be fine. Things are starting off really well. And she was like, yeah, yeah, I know. Like, yeah, I'm getting old now. It's not a big deal for me. I was never super into kids. But then through the conversation I learned, she said, we talked about fertility or something. And uh, she said, have I ever checked mine? And I said, like, nah, never cared. Don't want kids. I don't care if I'm fertile or not. I never saw the point of it. And she said, yeah, well, I I've been to a fertility clinic a couple of years ago. And I thought, ooh, there's a red flag. Like, tell me more uh, for someone who didn't care about kids. Why did you go? Oh, you know, a friend told me she had like a friend who worked there. And she said, it's kind of good to see for women's health if how fertile you are. And I was just curious, but I, I never really wanted kids. And I thought, yeah doesn't make sense. I wouldn't, I don't care. I, I'm not checking my fertility because I care zero and I don't want kids. I, I don't want to find out, you know, it'd be nice to find out I'm infertile because it would make, it put my mind at ease, I suppose. But I found that odd. And as such, I played it very careful around her, despite how uncareful she wanted me to be around her because I didn't trust her. And you have to have these conversations. You can't just see a red flag pop up and think, ooh, I won't say anything because I don't want to start an argument. And also, if you don't want to start an argument because you don't like Chicky Poo's temper or you don't want to just reveal the honesty of something, then that's your problem too. Because if that happens to a guy and you relay this kind of story and say, well, yeah, she went to fertility clinic and she was very cagey and she was very vague about children and we just dropped the subject and then one day she wanted to have a kid now and paying for child support, you'll say, well, you avoided the topic. You knew it was there. It was an elephant in the room and you just uh, uh, refused to address it. For me, keep hammering at the elephant until it's no longer there. It's no longer in the room. The room is clear and empty and you're free. But you don't have this ghost sitting in the corner that's as big as an elephant that's kind of making you walk on eggshells or avoid certain conversations. And you're right, uh, Ryan. If you tell a woman she doesn't want kids, she might tell herself this, but this is why you need to talk all the time and really hammer the point home that uh, you need to find out. And if you can tell she's vague and lying and she contradicts herself and she's hypocritical and says she kind of loves kids and she would like kids, but then, no, no, with you it's different. I kind of don't want them. You need to make a decision or you need to be very, very, very careful and uh, not go all the way completely without any kind of protection or strategy in the bedroom. If you don't trust your partner... Because then, otherwise, you can't build a future. If you don't trust them completely, and I know a lot of guys will say, well, all men who went to the altar trusted their woman. I don't think so, because a lot of the guys that I've met that were about to get married were married. You talk to them privately in the office, and they'll say, oh, just don't tell my wife. Oh, she wouldn't like it if she heard me speaking like this. It's like, my partners, like there's nothing I say here that my partners would be surprised about. So a lot of people just avoid the very serious parts of them and they feel like it's okay. I don't need to talk about that with Chicky Poo. I've got my male friends or I've got my streams or I've got my little gaming area of life. You're completely free with your partner and you know you can trust them where there's nothing you can't talk about. You never have to lock the door with whatever you watch online, whatever you look at, if your partner wants to look at your phone, there is there is nothing you need to hide. 
not because I need her to check on me or pr prove that I'm okay, but it's you're completely free, as free as you are in your life when you are single. And if you can't do that, stay single. I agree. Um, what's this about Chad? Okay. Are there any? I'm looking for any questions. All right. So let me know your comments uh, about if you've been confronted. Has it been an ultimatum? Has it really? Has it been an ultimatum for any of you guys where she's always wanted something and you've delayed it? Like, I want kids or I want to get married. And you say, yeah, yeah, someday, someday, whatever. Yeah, maybe. I want kids someday. But you don't really want it or not with her and you keep delaying it. That's different. She's giving you an ultimatum probably because she's tired of you postponing it. But if you say exactly what you want and who you are and she's like, yeah, okay, and later on, she blindsides you. This isn't uh, this ultimatum is blackmail because she's already got you. So there's a difference between you delaying something and being vague yourself, and then you're the bad guy, like I'm describing some women be. They're, they're vague, and then later on they come out with who they are and what they want. Don't be the same kind of person where you're vague, you're not telling them exactly what you want, and you're wasting their time, and they really want to have kids. You need to, at the start peel the onion back straight away. Tell them exactly who you are without apology because you owe them nothing. They're just pretty. You, you like them. Or they're the first person you've met in a long time that you enjoy spending some time with. But they still not, might not be the person for you. I've All of my serious relationships bar, I'd say, 20% maybe, m the vast majority, they were nice people. They were, but we just found out we didn't want the same things in life. We didn't have the same values completely. I thought it looked promising at the start, but it didn't. But at least we got along in the fundamental ways, and then you find out in, in, in the really important ways you don't. But I just think people find someone who's refreshingly different than all the rest without talking, without finding out the values, and then just commit, move in, get married, have kids, and just lock themselves in with someone. And later on, they find out, what do I do? And it's too late. Because you need a lot of time away to be yourself with your friends, on your own, hiking, bike riding, in your studio, in the shed in the backyard, riding your car, driving your car. You just, um, your part, your, the person you once loved just becomes a roommate that you care for and you've got history with and you're loyal to that history, but you don't really, you're not compatible with them at all. Not in the fundamental ways. So the, the typical ones are marry me or I leave or I want kids or I'm going to leave. That's Everyone knows that's an unfair ultimatum. It's basically saying, you know, if you don't give me what I want, I don't care about you, but you need to give me something or I'm going. And it's fair enough that you need this in a relationship. But if the person doesn't matter and you refuse to talk, then I'm sorry, it's on you. You don't want to talk. You don't want to care if you're compatible. You just want something from them. You want kids, you want a family, or if you're a guy, you just want to get them into bed, or you just want, you don't want to be alone, so you're fine with just having an, a person you're not compatible with just so you're not lonely. That's on you. You will suffer in an incompatible relationship that you don't talk in. You, you, you just will. And if you don't need to talk, well, that's on you. You'll just take whatever comes along your way. If a problem comes along the way, you won't be able to talk your way through. You won't have someone who can support you because you don't even know if you can. You don't know if you think the same, if you've got each other's backs. And when someone gives you an ultimatum, as far as I can see, this is what I think. When someone gives you this kind of ultimatum where, you know, I've you're, you're with someone, you think it's good. And they come out with this kind of ultimatum, I want kids or I want marriage or whatever, and you've never talked about it, or you have, and they come off, they they change, they do a 180 on who they were. This for me is the best, best example of not talking and just coasting through your relationship based on vibes and fun and let's see where this goes and avoiding the personal values between the two of you and your character. That's the best example of me, for me. When you get a comment like this, where I'm completely baffled when she, in one moment, 
exhibits a certain character trait that I've never seen before. You know, it's it's great. Like, thank you for showing it to me finally. But that to me is the best example of you not talking with your partner right from the beginning and talking about what's most important. That your yeses and your noes and your fairness values are all the same. You know, there's a person I can trust. They think right and wrong is the same as me. There's someone I can trust. But if you don't know you can, why the hell would you marry or move in with them or... I don't know. You take what you get, I guess. But Mr. Anderson, thank you for the super chat donation. I appreciate it. He says, blackmail is the norm. Oscar Wilde said, Women, woman begins by spurning man's advances and ends by blocking his retreat. Sorry, I know you hate quotes and sayings. No, I don't. I don't hate quotes and sayings. I I. Uh, I I have a lot of quotes and sayings that I use. I'm just saying the guys online who use them as memes to replace their own conversation, you talk to them and all they do is give you quotes after quote after quote, but not quote and what they think or not them being informed by a quote. So then when they speak, you can tell they've got some of the intelligence from this Oscar Wilde quote, for example. So some of Oscar Wilde and Hemingway and whoever else has been smarter than you in history spills in and bleeds into your personality and your knowledge and your wisdom. You know, it, it doesn't come through in your conversation. That's what I see a lack of, but, um, quotes. No, I, I love quotes. I just don't use them as memes to replace my own conversation. I use them as things I pluck out, just like my little stories about, you know, things that happened, anecdotes in my past with ex-girlfriends. It's, lessons and uh, very important little um, landmarks and flags that uh, help me learn my lessons and have some sort of wisdom. Um, Ryan says, honestly, ultimatums are straight up manipulation. Run, run, run. Yes. And learn how to answer these. I've said this in many streams where, you know, there's the typical... Um, things that guys are frustrated by when women put them on the spot by like where is this relationship going uh don't you want this for us as well uh, a normal guy would want this someone just hurt you or they shame you in these certain phrases right and all the guys will get together and say yeah i hate that like that's a cliche learn how would you answer that cliche if chicky poo said it to you or put you in the spot or rebooted your hard drive with that sort of shaming language, stunned you with that, would you have a response? And I think it's very important to have a response, not one that's meaningless, but that actually stands up for yourself and gives you time to respond. And for me, one is, let me think about it. And if she doesn't let you, then it's like, what? I, I, I can't think about it. Or if you have an opinion different to hers, my response is always, I can't have an opinion here. Are you the only one in the relationship? I can't at least have 50% say, input. Is it whatever you want? And I just have to say yes. Is it 100% your relationship? Tell me, sweetheart, is it 50% yours at least? Cannot Do I have a, at least a say? Or is it all arrogantly just you? Learn to have an answer and stand up like you're talking down to her like a, like a parent because she's being a brat. Because it's not fair. It's not fair to have a, a child take over the whole relationship and you're the only mature one. You're acting like a, a father who just says yes to his little daughter because he wants her to ever have everything. you got to get out of that. Whenever you put on the spot, learn to have answers for the cliches. That's I would say if you're going to practice any one-liners, don't practice how to approach women and what to say and how are you, what's a nice girl like you doing in a place like whatever those lines are, right? I've, I've never used them. The only lines you should really remember that should be useful is what to say when you're put on the spot by the bullshit cliche of the entitled women out there. Things like, like I just said, what I can't ever say? Can I think about it? Why, does it need, why are you pressuring me? Why do I have to agree to this just because you want to? Well, any normal guy, a real man would like, really? A real man just says yes to his woman? A real man just doesn't, can't think about it. I can't have an opinion. Is my only opinion your opinion? 
it's learn to have an answer for the cliches. Don't worry about the answers for picking up women. Approaching women and talking is like having a conversation with anyone. Hello is the first thing, then just make it up. Be nervous, whatever. It's it's a good sign if you're nervous. The other person can tell you like them. They'll be as nervous as you. It'll be fine. But if you're nervous and they're arrogant, then you know that they're incompatible or they're a bitch or they're an arsehole or whatever. So don't worry about lines for meeting someone. Worry about lines to defend yourself from shaming language, the, the cliches. I would, I would say that. That's about the only memes and lines you need to remember. Let's see. Any other questions? Uh, how long have we been going? We might wrap it up soon. We've been going for half an hour, just over, nearly 40 minutes. Ooh, this could be a, a really short stream. I don't think of it. I think, have I ever done a stream shorter than like 50 minutes or an hour? I don't think so. This could be a record. But I, I thought this was a very cliche comment that I, I stumbled upon again about this, the woman throws a, you know, drops the bomb of a question that if you don't say yes, if you don't say it in the right way, if you don't respond and agree with her, the relationship is gone and she surprised you. And I think, why is it such a surprise? I, I've been with Stephanie for a few years and I've, I was telling her this morning in relation to this stream, I said, I can't actually think of anything that you could say that would surprise me obviously you could make up a story but it would be a movie and I, I really can't now obviously people will say well you know a woman could do this or do that or surprise you yeah, anyone could your your mother could surprise you with how she's been her whole life and just do something to completely out of character but the chances of a really really small and the longer you know someone, the longer you talk, the longer you get under the skin and know them completely naked in their personality and their values. They know, you, you see them three-dimensionally, exactly naked, who they are, what they, like, you're not surprised by how they speak and when there's something in, I, I can almost predict Stephanie's response or the ballpark. It's never 180. It's never, whoa, I never expected that. It's, an interesting comment from the direction in which I thought she was going to answer from most of the time. And uh, these these ultimatums that guys or girls maybe get, I don't know, but with guys especially, the, the shaming of man up, don't you want this for us? I want to have a kid. Aren't you happy? Why do you look like that? It's like, whoa, I'm stunned. Maybe I never want, we ne maybe we never had this discussion. Maybe like... And so she sees that he's stunned. Maybe he doesn't like it. And she probably knows she doesn't like being cornered like that. As Quaz said, it was be as stupid as me being with a girl and saying, hey, babe, or saying to Stephanie now that, you know what? I just sold up the house and I'm buying a little shack on top of some frostbitten mountain away from everybody. And it's kind of like, whoa, what's wrong with you? Don't you want it for both of us? Like, I thought she loved me. I thought, like, I could just keep shaming her, but basically I just want to sub subdue it into just what I want. I don't actually care, and I won't discuss with her a life choice that involves both of us. It's so arrogant and stupid. Would you like it in reverse? I'm talking to the ladies that just think a man should automatically love a surprise kid. Surprise! The rest of your life is changed, and I don't care how, and I'm not going to ask you. Hey, hey. It's like, would you like that too? If the man you loved, uh, you thought about him in a certain way and he completely blindsides you with something he never told you about and he's upset at you that uh, you're not happy with his surprise decision that's going to change your whole life and you have no say in it. I, I, I pretty much 100% guarantee you wouldn't. You wouldn't like it. Oh, that, that annoys me. The arrogance of, of, of some women that they, they, they shame a guy for not being happy with a decision that they're happy with and the guy obviously isn't, and was, he was never consulted. You might as well get annoyed at a guy that he doesn't like pretty woman. He's never seen it, and you just surprise him like, you have to watch, you have to love it. You have to love it. What's wrong with you? Shame, shame, shame. I'm going to leave you. Anyway. Any last comments? Let's, um, 
get to the end of the stream. What's this people are talking about thinking ape? Uh, was he in the stream? I don't know. Anyway. Or did someone mention um, a thinking ape video? All right. Any comments? April Fools. That's a while ago. I think it's not a. Uh, th this is an actually interesting comment. It's not me making fun of this. It's. Um, here we go. Adam Super AC. He said, wait on a Stepford wife. It's not about waiting on a cookie cutter, perfect version of a of a woman that functions correctly like the robot that you want for me it's important that yeah she has the same values she sees life the same way you do but the important thing is making sure that her character personality and values the particular jane not the woman but the jane that you meet or the angela that you meet or the whoever that particular person that happens to be a woman and has certain female traits to whatever degree the, the particular Jane you meet is the important thing. Because what people don't want to admit is that every woman isn't exactly the same. Biologically, she has certain traits and reactions and things like that. But how much of those traits is she? How much does she express as an individual Jane? And how much things do you have in common? How much could you live with with this person? How much, how much, how much easier would it be to live with Jane as opposed to Nancy over here? That's a very real question. And you only find that out through conversation and being honest through that conversation. And that's how you know, well, aside from all the other women, this is a woman I'm going to commit to or move in with or marry or have kids with if you're that way inclined. That's the exception. It's not the unicorn. It's the exception that you're looking for so that you can get off the, the carousel of all the other crazies and the incompatible people. So... You're just refining the choice down to your particular person. But if you say that they're all the same, then they're all terrible. They are. They're all terrible. If you look from the lens of they're all the same and they all, they're all biological women, they are. But beyond that is the specificity of the person that you keep continually going on a date with and you, you exclude all others and you're forming a bond and a trust with this person that over time is consistent and you know you want to commit to them to the exclusion of everyone else. That's the best you can do. It's the it's also to a lower degree how you come up with a best friend or people you want to hang out with. You learn to trust them over time and uh, you don't care about others and you're grateful to have a, a best friend you can trust as well. And again, that best friend can screw you over. There are a lot of cases of that. Uh, Neanderthal says, not too much about the topic, really. If not both have a yes to children, the only thing is to go seek happiness with someone else or alone. Women have that choice regarding uh, having children. Yeah. If you know it's, you can't just know it's important to you and then just hope that this person who's really great in every other respect later on, they'll grow into it. No, it will probably be the thing that breaks you apart. It, did, it has with me in the past. I was with someone good and it was fundamentally the reason we parted ways because they wanted a life that I didn't want. And it will change your life. It's not just something, well, you know, say for instance, I, I want to, to, to buy a certain house or a certain car that's kind of a, a big thing in our life, but it doesn't really affect Stephanie. But she just kind of like, all right, it's going to be a bit of a thing, but it's not going to force her to become someone else and turn our whole life upside down where we have to start from a blank slate and become different people to accommodate that different change in life. But a kid does that. You can't just slot a kid in. Like it's hard enough having a dog. A dog changes your life. And a lot of people think, no, it doesn't. It does. You've got to walk it every day. You can't just spend the night at a person's place. You can't just go for a holiday. There's just all of this planning and stuff. Multiply that by 100 when you have a kid, as well as expenses. I have to change the way I work. I can no longer work part-time. I have to work full-time. I have to go back to corporate. I have to change the, everything, how I travel to work. It turns your life. It's, a, it's the biggest domino 
that changes a couple's life. And you have to talk about that big domino because it'll fall and it'll affect and ruin everything else if you don't agree. Um, Alex says, thinking ape is watching. Well, hello, Stardusk. Hope you're well. Um, Melee says, human wants out. Why? What do I want out? Out from what? What are you talking about? Remember, guys, if you would like to add a comment, because I, I notice on passing there are a few nice questions and nice comments. If they're interesting enough or you're talking amongst yourselves, if you want to share it, put three smiley faces before your comment like this, and I can see them rather than searching for them and uh, adding a lot of dead spots within this stream. So I would reiterate with this being blindsided by women that uh, she comes out of nowhere and says she wants kids, but you don't. She wants to be married. She's always wanted to be married, but she never t said anything. I think if you talk all the time and you're always talking to the bone of things that are important to you, look at how much I can blab in this stream. Do you think that Stephanie doesn't get this all the time in every conversation? <laughs> she does. But she likes it, and I don't care because this is me. <laughs> it's uh, just be who you are, and who cares if Chicky Poo likes it or not? If she didn't like this, then we wouldn't be together. She would be driven nuts by me. But you have to talk, jokes aside, the important things, you have to lay those cards on the table. You can't keep them at your chest. You're not going to win this poker game by keeping things at your chest. This is a poker game where you both turn your cards around and you show each other what you have. You really do. It's not a game of deceit and strategy. It's a game of complete openness where the laying down of armor is precisely what engenders trust, whether it's between platonic friends or romantic partners. It really is. Um, and the information in the red pill space is very useful and it gets you knowing women in general. So then when you go on a date with someone with 99% who are incompatible out there, you notice who's a cookie cutter woman with the same responses that are incompatible to you and that you just couldn't live with. And it's too much of hard work and too many red flags. And another guy would love that. That would be a green flag. But for me, it's a red flag. For, for, for one guy, kids is a green flag. For me, it's a complete red flag. It's an immovable feast. I just can't do it. So first comes with you being honest with yourself and having the courage to see nothing wrong with turning up on a date and being completely you. And if you have deficiencies, work on them if they're objective ones. Like you can't spend all your time just playing Warhammer and then dating is hard enough out there, especially in the West, where it's hard enough to find someone who's compatible. You are narrowing your dating pool with just only finding someone who can talk about Warhammer all the time, that you're no good with just idle chit-chat in interesting ways. Like, I could talk about the most mundane things in a philosophical way uh, w without being too intellectual or nerdy. Like, uh, someone orders pasta, you know, why? Ask questions like, why? Be interested and then go deeper. Why did you always eat pasta? What nationality are you? Uh, don't you think pasta, I get problems with eating, whatever it might be, just talk about it, but talk about it intelligently, not just with whatever. I'm trying to give you the things I knew, bef uh, th that I know now that I wish I knew, I, I implemented a little bit more of. Yes, I knew, I started to learn more about female nature politics, the dangers out there. Yes, they're great. Keep the wrong kind of women. Don't even go on dates with them. Or if you go on a date, know that you're not going to go out with them again and certainly not go to bed with someone who's dangerous, no matter how they look. Be able to use that mind that you're so proud of that you talk with in the conversation with your, your friends on servers and, and things like that, where you talk about this stuff, where you're proud of yourself, where you know the difference between fair and unfair between men and women and how entitled women are. But when you go on a date, you can also see that and not go on a second date with her, not go back home with her, not go into dangerous areas. And yes, we are biological, 
but if you submit to bio your biology all the time, how many times are you going to dodge a bullet? It's only a matter of time before you cop it. You will. This, you should learn from dodging those bullets. But anyway, any last questions? Let's uh, wrap this thing up. I hope you got something from that. Have uh, I want to see if there's any more comments. Uh, Peg says, hello, Stephanie. She must be in the room. Hi, Peg. <laughs> Mr. Anderson says, uh, the difference between dating and 40, 40K is I enjoy the latter. <laughs> Neanderthal says, nothing wrong with Warhammer. Just don't expect a girlfriend also to be your Warhammer partner. Yeah, exactly. It would be nice, but if you spend all of your time, all of your sunshine resides in Warhammer, to use a metaphor, or an, 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 an analogy, you you are just making dating impossible trying to find, that. that's a unicorn, trying to find an exceptional woman who also is into you, to Warhammer. But also, you probably want her to be into Warhammer like you are. I know uh, guys who are into gaming, but they also get frustrated where she, when they find a girl that's not as good as they are or doesn't play like they do, or doesn't play the kind of games they like playing. It's still frustrating. So I'd say your hobbies and interests don't need to be aligned. I think your partner, if you have the same values and they like you, then they will respect what you respect and like. So Stephanie was never into video, video production and cameras and all of this sort of stuff. She writes and we can both talk and she's into the English language and literature and things like that. There is a middle ground, but we like completely different things. But we have the bridge of conversation and uh, seeing things from different points of view because we do talk, we do create that bridge. But if uh, you just need to be compatible via your hobbies, I think that's a hard ask because you will change in your hobbies. What if you give up certain ho hobbies like I have? or certain hobbies become less. You meet your partner when you completely love World of Warcraft, and then you don't play as much, but your partner still does, and then that they, they creates a distance, and they're off playing World of Warcraft on the level at, at which you met, but you're, you're doing other things. You're taking up some other hobbies. Thank you for the pause button. Um... Blake's, I know you do more with lives now, but I miss your edited videos with the subject. Really enjoyed the long-term effects of your channel made me think. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to do more of them. I've just, um, I've just been doing a few things in my life the last uh, couple of months that I took a break. I think it was, I went on holiday. Whenever you take a break, it's hard coming back. Because I've got the still, I've still got the same amount of time, but I'm just not producing the same uh, videos. But I'm, I agree with you. I, I miss them too. So I'm going to make a, a big effort to produce uh, more edited videos. But my problem is I'm, I'm, I spend so much time trying to perfect them, and at the end of the day, I should just do good enough when it comes to them, because I, I enjoy the good enough of these streams. Um, so yeah, I agree with you, Blake. I'll. Stay tuned for more edited videos on specific topics without me waffling on like I do here. Ryan says, women always tell me that I need to find someone that thinks just like I do, but that only leaves other men with <laughs> Asperger's. <laughs> ah. All right. Any last comments let's see let's see boston guy says it's never been an ultimatum for me because i stated up front and if she doesn't agree it's over before it starts yeah you can see it in the other person if you really go to the bone of conversations you notice a red flag don't ignore it get rid of the red flag by finding out the truth of it or you might have misinterpreted it. You, you might have misinterpreted something. 
and I, there are countless uh, moments I remember when I was dating in the last decade where I, I made it a point never to let a red flag go. To get, never, it's kind of like you know when couples say you never go to bed angry. I never leave a date or a conversation with you know in the past when I was dating. I never leave it unsaid if I if there's something tickling me in terms of an amber or, or a red flag. I would always have to address it because I want to know. I don't want to be driving away from the date thinking, "Ooh, that was weird." Let's try and ignore that before the next date. That'll go away, and then it you get used to it and you don't bring it up any you don't bring it up anymore. So you don't want to be doing that. The, the, the amount of freedom that comes with just kind of saying everything you feel, questioning everything you need to question, just to kind of rip the Band-Aid off, and then you're off the hook, and then you feel free, and then you can trust over time if it's consistent. And that's the best you can do. There's no guarantees. Yes, there is a chance that no matter how much you trust anyone, platonic or romantic, that later on they can betray you. Friends betray you. No one can betray you as much as someone who you loved and you move in with and you, you go the whole nine yards with. I get it, right? But you either try to trust and love the best way you can if that's what you want to do. But if you don't care about that, if you just care about the, the, the hygiene of zero risks and you don't want to put up with it and it's not interesting to you, fair enough. I respect you, right? But for those guys that honestly would like some company, they do want to see if they can kind of solve this Rubik's Cube that they've always butted their head against, then I think this discussion that I'm trying to have on my streams especially is the best approach you can sort of do. All right, let's wrap the stream up. I know I said it before. Oh, there's a super chat. Disco Cobra, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it, man. Uh, he says... I'm not into the idea of kids right off the bat. Maybe after a few years into a relationship. Really depends on if we can afford it at the time. I'm open to it. Western women are too extre uh, uh, so extreme. So I was considering other countries like Europe and Asia. Look, I've said this before. I never th thought of women in relationships that important, that are, the, women in companionships were that important that I put them right at the front. They were something that was still important that I liked, that I liked spending time with if it was good, but they were tertiary. They were never primary. I accidentally found Stephanie or she found me, and then it became important to see if I could make it work. And, and it became, because it was a, an opportunity that I knew I should take, but from my own point as a, a single individual person, I, I just didn't want it anymore. And it's only if an opportunity like Stephanie came along that I would investigate it and then, okay, I will see if this can work. But I never chased it anymore. And uh, I think it's quite normal that uh, a lot of guys stop chasing. But I agree, Western women, it's uh, like looking not just a needle in a haystack. It's it's like looking for an inhabitable planet in the, in the universe that resembles Earth you know, your earth and you're trying to find another hab habitable planet. Planet, So uh, it, it is, it's, it's almost impossible in the West. The older you get, it's virtually impossible. It's almost, you're wasting your time. But if you find, if both financially and it is important to you, hierarchically, like it is first place, it's not tertiary, I would say you've got a better chance. If you're going by the numbers, go to Europe and go to first world countries in Europe, which de it depends on the first world country. Germany's not great at the moment by people I talk to. Stephanie is also uh, obviously Dutch. That country is still a bit more traditional, uh, uh, very direct and a, a bit more structured in the way they think in terms of fair. There's, it's less woke, far less woke than other countries. Scandinavian countries tend to be like that, but not all. Sweden is m more woke than others. But then uh, again, I would say, aside from the US, America, and the UK, um, uh, sorry, the US, Australia, and the UK, yeah, if it's important enough to you, you've got better chance overseas. Stop wait, wasting thousands of dollars on women here over and over again, and they're the same ones on the dating profiles, and you keep going out with the same women. Spend uh, the money on a plane ticket and go for a nice holiday and uh, 
see who you can talk to there. But the problem is you could just, I'm not saying to go and spend thousands of dollars on plane tickets and get nothing. Um, I can't give, I can't give you uh, a prescriptive answer, guys. I, I can just tell you, I can just discuss and have conversations with you uh, a sensible way of going about getting what you want that's realistic to get out there. And there are compatible, decent women out there, not for everyone, compatible for you, but also if you're a, a defensive person that's been hurt in the past and stuff and you've you got to be honest about where your boundaries are and you just don't want to do it anymore. You don't want to be hurt. You don't want to feel that way anymore. I just can't trust women. I'm, I'd like to, but I can't. Then at least that's honest and then you don't want to do it from that standpoint. But don't lie to yourself wanting something and then sabotaging yourself with your attitude and you go to dates with kind of red pill memes spitting out of your mouth and you look weird to somebody else. Um, I hope that made sense. Video trip, uh, double two double two tubes it says no need to overproduce the videos. I've loved the most the ones you did just by walking out in nature. Yeah, yeah. Look, you're, you're talking my language. Uh, I, I want to do more walking around videos. Uh, just do a vlog on one subject. Walk around for twenty minutes or half an hour, and just uh, do this on one topic because I know I, I enjoy this. I think the thing is when you walk around, I'm always I hear a little sound and I don't know if it's a person and they distract me and I'm not focused on what I'm talking. And so out in public, uh, I, I still find it hard to pretend like I'm in my own little bubble and people can just walk around. On, I admire people that can vlog in public in city streets. I just, I, I can't do it. I'm, I'm too distracted. I need to be focused like this because right now it's just me, you, and I know that no one's going to interrupt me. I think that's the thing. I'm going to be interrupted and people are going to look at me. So, but I will definitely more videos. I'm not going to overproduce. I'm, I've been in the last few months preparing a couple of videos that I want to do, but also the systems by which I'm going to produce them, like this have the same kind of intros and uh, transitions and everything and just drop them in place and just edit the, the blank spots in the videos and just dump them onto you. And I think people appreciate them more because I've noticed that no matter how much I produce a video and I just turn up on a stream, I get roughly the same amount of views. So if I'm going to, I might as well just approach them the same way. So I prepare these videos with screens and things like that, but I just dive into the topic. So um, yeah, stay tuned. I'm going to drop a couple more off the cuff, short little topic related videos without them being essays on a topic. Big ol, did you get a prenup? If not, why did you feel that you could trust the government with your best interests? I don't trust the government. I trust Stephanie. And a lot of times you, you guys will be like, well, you can't. Why would you even be with someone you can't trust? Why would you have a? Why would you invite a friend or uh, trust them with your money or holding your wallet? Uh, what's the point of having a serious relationship if you can't? I've had enough of them in the past where I just couldn't, and I didn't want any of those. And then I meet a person that I can trust, and it just increases over time. Why wouldn't I? Yeah, she could do anything in the future. I'm sure she could. She she would have the legal ability to do so. I got the ability to open the, the <laughs> I got the ability to, to, to open the cutlery drawer and take out the big knife at the moment. I could do that, but like, will I do it? Does she trust me that I won't or will? It's so stupid. Like, yeah, your partner could do almost anything. And I know the law's on her side, but I wouldn't have even entertained the option of a relationship with Stephanie if there was one part of me that thought that. And again, some of you will say every guy that went to the altar, every guy that committed to a woman, every guy that had kids with a woman, every guy thought the same. Maybe, maybe. But then what do you say to the people that have successful relationships, that have a happy family, that have a happy partner, that they 
they're glad that they've been together. Look, I've, I've run across them all the time, YouTube videos, people I talk to. They've been together for 20 years, 25 years. They're married and they have kids and all that sort of stuff, What whether I want it or not. And there's just too many examples of happy, compatible people. And I know there's a lot of idiots out there, much more than there used to be because of social media and the, the the way they're conditioning everyone and expectations and the West and all that. I get it. I get it. It's, it's much more difficult to find somebody. But the good compatible people aren't the unicorn. They're very rare. The unicorn for me is the kind of women that Fresh and Fit have on their podcast that they try to make into wives and you control them because you're alpha and then you can get a long relationship with kids and you can marry this person. That to me is a unicorn that doesn't exist. You're trying to to, to make a, a stripper into a wife kind of thing. That's, again, as I like to say, do what you want. I'm not your father. Uh, and uh, I, I'm not going to, like, if you... I never tell you what to do. I'm offering suggestions to someone who's like-minded, who wants to chew on my ideas and do what they want to do. Just in the same way, when I hear people talk about subjects or I read about things, though, I think, well, that's really interesting. I never thought about it like that. That really solves or, or, or uh, finishes a piece of the jigsaw puzzle that I was never able to finish or make clear. I'm, and I'm grateful for that. But ultimately, the whole picture of what I want to do is mine. So think for yourself. All right, I think that's it. I don't see any more questions or comments. We've been going for just over an hour. Nice place to leave it. So, yeah. Are you one of these people? This Has this happened to you? Where you've been blindsided? You truly never knew she was going to do this. Or when you look back at her actions, her secrecy, avoidance of topics, things you can never talk to her about because Chicky Poo... It starts an argument with her. She sulks, you know, things like that. So um, I always find that uh, interesting when I talk to guys that say, this happened to me. And then when you talk about, well, what was she like? How was it like when you met? Did she have a temper? Was she impatient? Was she unfair? Did she exhibit this, that? Did you notice anything about her? What did you fight about? What did you disagree about? Did she need to spend time alone in certain areas and you did as well? Where was the separation between the two of you? And a lot of times it's like, yeah, yeah, there was some of this and some of that. Um, so all I can suggest is date intentionally if that's what you want to do. Talk, talk, talk. I, I, I'm going to be a broken record on, on this. Talk from the very first date inquire with a smile on your face playfully have fun on the date about everything that's really important like kids if you want them or marriage if you want them or how you see commitment some of you know polygamy if that's what you're into whatever you're into whatever's a big flag in your world that you can't you're not going to compromise on talk about like let them know exactly who you are and what you believe in and uh what your room looks like and hopefully she wants to, you know, reside in that room and her room looks the same as yours and it's both familiar. Talk, talk, talk. Learn to express exactly who you are and what you want. And don't be afraid that uh, this beautiful person on the date is going to fly away. She's going to she's gonna fly away anyway. You can't, you, you, you can't keep, you can't keep beauty if there's no meaning underneath it. It's, it's fleeting. You know, you'll spend five minutes with her and uh, you're just going to spend the rest of your relationship trying to keep them from going. And you don't want to do that. You're going to have to say, yes, dear, all the time. You're going to have to say this all the time, keeping your mouth shut and hoping for the best. And that's the only way any kind of longevity in your relationship uh, w will come about. The only way. Oh, was such a nice guy. I did everything for her. Everything she wanted to do, I did. Aren't I great guys? Yeah, you're a saint. Still got crucified. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't get you to teach young guys how to behave. Like I'd, 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 I'd wheel you out there as an example. In the same way we take problem kids, we take them to prison. 
to meet violent people here, scare them to death to show them what not to be. That's how I would wheel you out. If I was to mentor kids, young guys, of what not to do, I would, I would get you to talk to them. It's like, yeah, don't be him. This is a lesson. Not to shame you, because I've been that guy too. But that's not who to be. That should humble you into reversing that person. That should humble you into speaking up for yourself and no longer being that five-year-old. All right. I think that's it. Any more questions, comments? All right, guys, enjoy your weekend. If you have a microphone, you would like to continue this conversation. Links below or in my comment in my about section, I have a link to my Gilded channel. Learn how to use a microphone and push the talk. Let everyone have a, a, a say. Don't take all the oxygen out of the room in the conversation. Don't dominate the conversation. A few of us get there and uh, have a continue this stream on Gilded. So um, I welcome you there. Like, comment, subscribe below. Do all that stuff that YouTube likes. I appreciate it. Thanks for turning up to the stream. And uh, let me know your comments in the comments uh, section below about being surprised. And was it really a surprise? And what do you think about being this being blindsided? I, I I'm always thinking, you never talked. I always think, you know what I think when I hear this comment? When I hear Oh, what do I do? I was just surprised by this. You know what I think? I think this. I think, did your partner change or are you having the, your first honest conversation ever? That's what I think. So that's my first reaction. I could be wrong. But when I hear this out of nowhere, this happened, I'm thinking you first saw an honest side for the first time. You're having the first honest conversation and one of you is having the conversation by just pressing the self-destruct button. But uh, that's my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and uh, enjoy your weekend. And um, I'll see you soon in the next stream or video, most likely, because I'm going to be putting a lot more effort into making regular videos that are less edited. So, um, yeah, see you then. Enjoy your weekend. See you in Gilded. Bye.